In the last video, we cloned this repository, Flexbox Boilerplate, and let's quickly go through the contents of this repository. So let's go inside the Flexbox Boilerplate. So here you can see the slides, you can see the boilerplate code. So I want you to just open the boilerplate code in your favorite text editor. For me, it's VS Code. For you, it can be anything, Notepad++, um, Sublime Text, Atom, or anything of your choice. But yes, I always prefer VS Code. So let's quickly jump on to the first topic for today, that is Flexbox Access. But before that, let me also show you the contents of this boilerplate code. So the entry point of this code is index.html. In index.html, let's have a look at it through the live server. So in index.html, I have already made a boilerplate for you so that you can directly use this and see. Uh, so this has various properties inside CSS Flexbox, for example, the flex direction, the justify content, align items, and so on. And each file, each of this button is basically, it's, it's an A tag, each of these anchor tag is linked to its own individual file. For example, the flex direction is linked to the flex direction.html and we can easily open it from here. And each file, each HTML file has its own CS file, CSS file with the same name. So for example, the first link points to the flex direction. Let's go back here. First link points to the flex direction. Inside the flex direction, we have a CSS link to flex direction dot CSS. So this is how our boilerplate is structured. So this is something super simple, not, no uh, rocket science here, something very, very easy to understand here. And all we need to do is, so I have just styled the index.html for you so that you don't have to do the styling of this page. So we can directly go to the flex, flex direction and start working on the flex direction property or any other property and then we will write the code the style sheet the css code completely from scratch cool so this was all about the boilerplate so that you can easily start using the boilerplate in your code and now we are actually going to look into the flexbox access so as i told you there are two major parts of flexbox and those are something super important to understand. First one is the access, the Flexbox access. And second one is the understanding that everything in a Flexbox basically contains of parent element and child elements. A child element itself can be a parent element of its own child and its child can be a parent to its own child. I hope you are understanding. So basically it is very simple. You can probably make a tree structure out of it, but you have to understand that there will be one parent element, which will be the flex container. And then there will be child elements, which are going to be called as flex items. So this is something super simple. After understanding the Flexbox access, we are going to directly jump on to the coding part and that's going to make it super easy to understand. But for now, just hang on with me and try to understand the things that I am teaching you. Cool. So the Flexbox access, once again, it's something super, super important. So Flexbox access is basically there are two axes in Flexbox. First one is main axis. And second one is the cross axis. So forget about this horizontal or vertical concept in Flexbox. I have seen a lot of people get confused about what is vertical and what is horizontal. Seeing things as, as vertical and horizontal is the wrong way, is the wrong approach while learning Flexbox or while implementing Flexbox. I have taught a lot of students the concepts of CSS Flexbox and trust me, a lot of people get confused here itself trying to understand what is vertical and what is horizontal. So keep this in mind that there is nothing like vertical or horizontal. There is a main axis and then there is a cross axis. For example, a main axis will be the main axis where uh, you can say you could align the items and, and all those things. So there is a main axis that is going to be the main 
of your your container or the flex flex container and the cross axis will be perpendicular to it so there is no concept of vertical or horizontal but there is a concept of flex direction so if the direction is rho then the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical if the flex direction is column then the main axis is vertical and the cross axis is horizontal so this is something super easy to understand this is something very very easy so for example let's say consider that these are nothing but three p tags or p elements so if you place one after another p1 p2 p3 and your flex direction is rho then they will go in the horizontal direction the along the main axis so content always goes along the main axis by default unless and until you do some other configurations to it so if you make the direction as column then the content will go along the vertical axis which is actually the main axis inside our flex direction column let me give you a summary trust me guys i know i'm taking a lot of time in this one but this is something super important because once you understand this concept flexbox will be super easy for you a lot of people get confused at this point itself so it's very simple always look at your screen as a main axis and a cross axis and if the flex direction is row then the main axis is nothing but the horizontal axis and if is its column then the main axis is the vertical axis and cross axis of course is the perpendicular axis to the main axis that is all about the flexbox axis and from the next video we are going to start looking in to the parent element properties which are the flex container properties i'm super excited for it and see you in the next video bye bye